What is up, Earth's mightiest subscribers? It's Ernie Blurred Without Fee here. Welcome back to the channel. Okay, so today's video, we are gonna be talking about DC Comics character, Dr. Fate. This is, once again, yet another holdover from when we did the Bail Project fundraiser. This is gonna be a character breakdown that was an incentive that someone asked for during that fundraiser with a donation, and here it is, it's late, but yeah, hey, better than never. That said, we are gonna break down Dr. Fate as much as humanly possible, a character with a very long legacy, and we're gonna try and do it without being over long and too slavish to the details, but we're gonna break down his character history, his powers, all that good stuff right now. But first, and let's hit that intro. Word to wise, grass only greener when it's fertilized. Gave him truth in these songs, they prefer the lies. That's any beautiful adrift in her purple lies. You can't see me, you see me. Wondering how I reach more evolutions than Evie. And make it look easy. Dr. Fate is a weird character to break down because by default he is the very definition of a legacy character. There have been multiple versions of the character throughout the years, dating all the way back to the original recipe, Dr. Fate, Kent Nelson, making his first appearance in More Fun Comics, number 55, in 1940 and was originally created by Gardner Fox and Howard Sherman. Kent was the son of an archaeologist named Sven Nelson, and while exploring the various tombs and ancient catacombs that they often visited, Kent stumbled upon the tomb of Naboo and accidentally awakened Naboo. This unfortunately unleashed a poisonous gas within the tomb that ultimately killed his father. Feeling sorry for Kent's newfound predicament, Naboo decided to take Kent under his wing and teach him the mystic arts for the next 20 plus years of his life. This ultimately led to Kent receiving the mystic artifacts that made him Dr. Fate. That would be the Ankh Amulet of Anubis, his patented Cloak of Destiny, and the Helmet of Naboo. While wearing the Helmet of Naboo, Dr. Fate is a master sorcerer thanks to his training by Naboo. He is well versed in spell casting and recognizing magic cast by others. He is unfortunately incapable of counteracting spells that are already cast and have already taken effect, likely due to the tenets of the Lords of Order as well as the weird rules of magic in the DC Comics universe. He is, however, capable of reversing and canceling the effects of elemental magic if they are cast by magicians and sorcerers who are less powerful and or less skilled than himself. He can also resist and negate the energy projections of some of the most powerful beings in existence. Not only can Dr. Fate cast magic, but he's also capable of sensing it in the environment around himself. He can also sense the auras of others. If that weren't enough, as Dr. Fate, he has a certain cosmic awareness that helps him sense events unfolding in the universe. He can even witness events happening in an alternate reality or across another dimension. Even magic from the darkest parts of the universe are under his control. He's able to conjure eldritch energy to wield as energy projection attacks of his own, typically in the form of Ankh. And beyond these, he can create energy constructs in a similar fashion to a green lantern, minus the need for a ring of power. The movement of time is something Dr. Fate doesn't often wield, but can control. He's been known from time to time to manipulate the passage of time in ways to slow his opponents and or hold them in stasis. He's also been able to use these abilities to time travel forward or backwards in time with varying degrees of success. The helmet also allows Dr. Fate to perceive the past and astrally project himself as well as others. He can also travel by way of flight using his telekinetic abilities or by way of teleportation without error, even able to travel between parallel Earths and all of the dimensions of the multiverse. The helmet also allows Dr. Fate the ability of true sight, allowing him to see through solid matter like Superman, minus the pesky lead weakness. This can also allow him to see through illusions as well. His magic also allows him to create powerful force fields strong enough to keep his attackers at bay. He's even been able to hold a force field 
shield against the attacks of powerful entities like Aquarius for up to a week. He's also able to render himself invisible to the naked eye, or he can render himself immaterial, allowing solid matter to pass right through him. He's also been known to create perfect copies of himself, sometimes thought to be mere illusions, which he is also capable of creating, but these are actual duplicates. Dr. Fate is capable of using telepathy and telekinesis. He's also capable of using these abilities to hypnotize others, and he's skilled in divination magic to uncover future events that might be shrouded in mystery. Not only that, but he can also wield the very power of the elements of Earth itself, granting him control over fire, ice, earth, water, electricity, and even the many facets of the electromagnetic spectrum itself, to simply name a few. Speaking of manipulating the elemental forces, he can also transmute one form of matter into another as he desires, manipulating organic matter on the molecular level and can even break down that same matter or even reconstruct it into something else as needed. The power of the Lords of Order grant him many things, as I mentioned earlier, but unfortunately, much of the power he wields is tied to the helmet. Without it, he loses virtually everything. His knowledge of magic and sorcery and his powers are found lacking. But he does still have access to some abilities even without the helmet. Without the helmet of Naboo, Dr. Fate can still wield great power such as immortality that keeps him alive indefinitely, though that is questionable because he can in fact die. He's just ridiculously harder to kill than others. He also maintains the gift of superhuman strength and invulnerability. His superhuman strength is considerable and allows him to hold his own against the likes of characters like Wonder Woman and Superman as well as others. This strength is also something he can pass on to another person if he so desires. His invulnerability is also incredible in that he is effectively immune to military grade weaponry and demolitions. Despite this, he is quite capable of being overwhelmed and taken down. He is not immune to being being deprived of breathing, and he can be knocked unconscious by a powerful enough attack. He's also incredibly vulnerable to poisonous gases, likely tied to PTSD from his origin. He can also fly without the helmet as well, as still access his telekinetic abilities that allow him to do so. When Dr. Fate casts magic, the effects tend to look like Egyptian hieroglyphs, specifically Ankhs. The amulet of Anubis that he wears is said to be a housing for all the souls who have ever wielded the helmet of Naboo. The cloak of destiny that Dr. Fate wears is rarely explored but it is known that the cloak itself is fireproof. Dr. Fate's abilities are often referred to as being the true conversion of energy into matter and matter into energy. That said, Superman's controversial weakness to magic could actually be voided if Dr. Fate felt the desire to take it away. Despite being introduced in More Fun Comics number 55 in May of 1940, Kent Nelson wouldn't be introduced officially as a character outside of being Dr. Fate until exactly a year later in More Fun Comics number 65. 67 in May of 1941. When Dr. Fate is wearing the helmet of Naboo, he is effectively emotionless, so much so that the Psycho Pirate's powers won't work on him. The helmet also has a mind of its own. If someone who does not quotey fingers own the helmet tries to put it on, the helmet can actually resist their attempts. Even if they're able to put it on, the helmet can put up a strong enough fight that even using the helmet's abilities will be difficult, even if they can keep the helmet on. The helmet also has other protections and enchantments in place for those it particularly doesn't want to touch it. Some villains have attempted to wield the helmet of Naboo and found themselves driven stark raving insane after trying to wear the helmet. The helmet also summons the amulet of Anubis and the cloak of destiny when it's put on. The helmet can also increase the intelligence of the person wearing it. During the pages of Helmet of Fate, Detective Chimp number one from 2007, Detective Chimp put the helmet on and his intellect increased to incredible levels and remained so even weeks after he gave up the helmet. The helmet even retained some of Detective Chimp's personality. That said, the helmet is not an intelligent item. It merely is aware of the world around it and what is happening. Though in the beginning, 
knowing when Naboo housed his soul within the helmet, he would possess whoever wore it, as we've seen in some other media and older comics. Nowadays, it's been retconned to him simply acting as an advisor to the helmet's wearer. And now that Naboo is dead, the helmet wields some of Naboo's memories and intellect that it has retained to act as an advisor in the same way that Naboo did before he died. Another interesting thing about the helmet of Naboo is that back in 1941, in More Fun Comics number 72, Dr. Fate began wearing a half mask version of the helmet of Naboo. This was not the actual helmet of Naboo, and because of this, Kent did not have access to Dr. Fate's full range of abilities, only the ones granted by the Amulet of Anubis and the Cloak of Destiny. One thing you'll likely notice as we get to talking about all the various versions of Dr. Fate, but the Lords of Order have no preference over whether the Doctor is male or female. In fact, the Lords of Order believe that Dr. Fate is only at his most powerful when both a man and a woman share the form of the protector of order and magic. Dr. Fate is all-powerful, but his skills aren't limited to just magic. Kent Nelson is a fairly average hand-to-hand -hand fighter, capable of taking on most any average fighter. He was also deeply knowledgeable in occultism even before becoming Dr. Fate. And as one would guess, being the son of an archaeologist and following in their footsteps, Kent is also a very well-known archaeologist. Kent also speaks multiple languages outside of English, mainly Portuguese and Spanish. He's also fluent in many ancient languages as well. Across all his various incarnations, Dr. Fate's allegiances beyond Naboo and the Lords of Order are listed as follows, but not limited to the All-Star Squadron, the Justice League, Justice League Dark, Justice League International, the Sentinels of Magic, and last but most certainly not least, the Justice Society of America, which he is a founding member of. There have been multiple versions of this characters I mentioned before. Dr. Fate first changed hands from Ken Nelson after his death to Eric and Linda Strauss in the short-lived Dr. Fate Volume 1, number 1 through 4 in 1987. The two characters being a son and his stepmother respectively, the two would come together, merging their bodies together as one entity as Dr. Fate. Their story gets weird after Dr. Fate Volume 2, number 12 back in 1989 Eric is killed during a battle with Darkseid. He jumps in the way of a blade that is thrown at Linda and sacrifices himself to save her life, leaving her as the only Dr. Fate. And then later on in the pages of Dr. Fate Volume 2, number 24, Linda Strauss would succumb to the effects of merging with Naboo to become Dr. Fate once more and stop anti-fate, and she would ultimately die as well, leading to both characters being reincarnated as Eugene and Wendy DeBellia, who suddenly have become husband and wife, and Naboo reincarnates himself into their unborn child. Yeah, that happened. Kent would once again be brought back to life by way of resurrection in Dr. Fate, Volume 2, number 24 in 1991, thanks to the magic energies within the Ankh amulet. This actually brought back not only Kent, but his love interest, Enza Kramer. Only catch is that only Enza would be able to become Dr. Fate. This would become a test of their relationship as Kent would chastise Enza for being reckless with the power of Naboo, only later to learn a Lord of Chaos had possessed the helm of Naboo, and eventually they would overcome this and they would reunite after a brief separation and merge their bodies together to become Dr. Fate the way Eric and Linda Strauss did prior to them. They would later retire from being Dr. Fate and brought on a smuggler by the name of Jared Stevens to find the Helm of Naboo and their trademark Ankh and Cloak during the Fate comic book series that tied into DC Comics' event Zero Hour in 1994, carrying on to his own series, The Book of Fate, that ran for 12 issues in a little under a year in February 1997 to January 1998. During this time, something strange happened happened. For the most part, the helmet of Naboo was always thought indestructible, but during Jared Stevens' turn as Dr. Fate, he actually managed to melt the helmet down and turn it into a dagger, as well as a bunch of throwing knives shaped like onks that were infused with magic, but when Jared died, the dagger and the knives returned to the form of the helmet of Naboo. 
a new Doctor Fate would be crowned in the name of a recently reincarnated Hector Hall in JSA number 4 in 1999. Some may remember Hector Hall, a character who first appeared in All-Star Squadron number 25 in 1983, as the son of Carter and Shiera Hall, aka Hawkman and Hawkgirl. He would go on to become the Silver Scarab and later on Sandman, but eventually all roads led to him becoming Doctor Fate. Due to being resurrected as the son of Hawk and Dub, this made him an agent of balance since at the time, Hawk was an agent of chaos and Dub was an agent of order. Hector would eventually be put to pasture by the Spectre, a character with long and storied ties to Doctor Fate, when Spectre tried to destroy all magic. This led to Hector and his being banished from reality, ultimately leading to them being lost in the Dream Realm. The helm would not be picked up again until much later when Kent Nelson's grandnephew, Kent V. Nelson, would later pick up the helm of Naboo in Countdown to Mystery number 1 in 2007. This would not last very long though, since this was during the lead up to Final Crisis and New 52 was not long after. Speaking of New 52, during that time frame, Khaled Ben Hassan would later become Dr. Fate in 2011 during the Earth 2 series. Khaled is the grandson of Kent Nelson, and his claim to fame while being Dr. Fate was that when he wasn't wearing the helm, everyone thought he was crazy because he always spoke of Naboo's voice speaking to him. We would later in 2015 get an Earth Zero incarnation of Dr. Fate in the form of Khaled Nasur, Kent Nelson's grandnephew, not unlike Kent V. Nelson. More recently, we've seen Dr. Fate in the pages of Justice League Dark, where Khaled, once thought dead, was actually being held prisoner by Naboo, who seemed to have very grim plans in place. All that aside, Dr. Fate is considered one of the 12 most powerful beings in all of DC Comics. There's even a version of Dr. Fate on Earth-22, the Kingdom Come universe, where Naboo is powerful enough to manifest as Dr. Fate, even without the need for a host body. The DC Comics Marvel mashup Amalgam Comics also saw Dr. Fate merged with Marvel's Dr. Strange and Professor X, turning him into Dr. Strange Fate. Dr. Fate has appeared in multiple forms of media outside of comics with one of his first live action appearances being on the Superman television series Smallville, where the Kent Nelson version of the character is portrayed by Brent State, namely in the season 9 two-part episode Absolute Justice with the helm of Naboo not appearing until the season 10 episode Lazarus. Speaking of the helm of Naboo, the helm did make a brief appearance in two other live action television television shows, like the season premiere episode of Constantine, Non Est Asylum, and it also appears on the CW series, Stargirl. When it comes to animated TV series, we've seen the Kent Nelson version of Dr. Fate appear in the Superman the Animated Series episode, The Hand of Fate, where he's voiced by George Del Hoyo. He makes a return in the Justice League Animated Series episode, The Terror Beyond, where he is portrayed by Oded Fair, and he makes multiple returns in the follow-up Justice League Unlimited animated series with Fair returning to portray Kent Nelson. During the Batman Brave and the Bold episodes, The Eyes of Despero, The Fate of Equinox, and Crisis 22,300 Miles Above Earth, Dr. Fate makes appearances where Greg Ellis serves as the voice of the character. One of Dr. Fate's more famous appearances in animated television came with the hit TV series Young Justice, where Dr. Fate, the Kent Nelson version, was voiced by Ed Edward Asner, while Kevin Michael Richardson took on the voice of Naboo. This version is notable for having multiple characters like Wally West, Aqualad, Zatanna, and Zatara take on the role of Dr. Fate. Kent Nelson would later return as Dr. Fate in the Justice League action animated series, only this time as a child version of himself thanks to Clarion the Witch Boy in the episode Trick or Treat, this time portrayed by Erica Luttrell. Outside of animated television,
television series Dr. Fade has also appeared in multiple DC Nation animated shorts. Now when it comes to animated films, Dr. Fate makes an appearance showing up as a cameo in Justice League Crisis on Two Earths. Dr. Fate returns in the Lego DC Comics superhero The Flash, voiced by Kevin Michael Richardson. And though he does not physically show up in the DCAU movie Justice League Dark, the helmet of Naboo does. An entirely brand new version of Dr. Fate appears in the DCAU film Suicide Squad Hell to Pay, voiced by Greg Grunberg. This version of the character goes by the name Steel Maxim, and for whatever reason, Naboo felt his physical fitness made him a prime candidate for Dr. Fate. This is mostly played for laughs since the character is completely incompetent and was unceremoniously fired from being Dr. Fate in a flashback scene. Steel even refers to a quotey fingers new chick being Dr. Fate now. This could be a reference to either Enza Kramer or Linda Strauss, but a name is never given. Dr. Fate has never been portrayed in a live action movie before, but that will soon change with the release of the on again, off again DCEU movie, Black Adam, starring The Rock, where he will be portrayed by actor Pierce Brosnan. Now when it comes to video games, Dr. Fate has appeared in a scant few, namely the DC Universe Online MMORPG. He's also made appearances in Scribblenauts Unmasked, a DC Comics adventure, and he also appears in two LEGO games, namely LEGO Batman 3 Beyond Gotham and LEGO DC Supervillains. Where most will be familiar with the character, at least from a video game perspective, is the hit fighting game series Injustice, where his costume makes a cameo appearance in the background of the Hall of Justice stage in Injustice Gods Among Us, and then he makes his playable character debut in the sequel Injustice 2, where he's voiced by David Sobolov. Now normally when I do this I like to give some recommended reading from the character that I'm talking about, and in this one I'm actually going to recommend Doctor Fate Volume 1 Issues 1 through Four by J.M. DeMattis and Keith Giffen, where we get to see the final adventures of Kent Nelson shortly before we are introduced to Eric and Linda Strauss. I also will recommend Dr. Fate Volume 2, which is Eric and Linda's ongoing series, and I will most certainly recommend Dr. Fate Volume 3, Issues 1-5, through 5, by Christopher Golden and Don Kramer, where we see Hector Hall take up the helm. I'm also going to recommend Dr. Fate Volume 4, Issues number 1-18, through 18, where the focus is more on the Khaled Nasur version of the character, and of course I will also recommend Justice League Dark Volume 2, number 1 through 27. Now that said, I also like to recommend an actor who I believe can play this character on the big or small screen, and with this one I gotta put a little bit of a statement. To cast Dr. Fate, I would actually pull a move that echoes what Marvel Studios did with the character of Ant-Man, only for different reasons. Where Marvel decided to go with the less problematic Scott Lang version version of Ant-Man and relegated the original recipe Ant-Man Hank Pym to the background as a mentor style character due to some problematic issues with his character being an abusive husband, I do the exact same thing here. Only in the case of Kent Nelson, it wouldn't be because he's problematic, but more because this is a character whose roots and identity are entrenched in Egyptian imagery and iconography. Instead of having a white savior character who, despite having Egyptian ties, is for all intents and and purposes a white character. I'd rather introduce one of Dr. Fate's more recent iterations, Khaled Nasur, the grandnephew of Kent Nelson that we mentioned earlier. And who would I get to play him? I would cast Mina Masood, who some may recognize from Disney's live action Aladdin remake, where he portrayed the title character or the Hulu original series Reprisal. Either way, I think this guy, an Egyptian Canadian actor, could get the job done. And just for shiggles, Originally, I had chosen actor Daniel Craig as my pick as the Kent Nelson version of Dr. Fate when I originally made this video and have him act as a mentor figure to usher in Khaled as the new Dr. Fate, which isn't that different from the origin he received in the comics. But I actually really like the idea of Pierce Brosnan portraying this character, so we're just gonna let that fall to the wayside. However, I am still going to stand by who I would want to play an updated Dr. Fate.
Now as we close this one out, I am admittedly not the biggest fan of Dr. Fate. I don't hate the character by any means, but I'm also not gaga over the character either. It's a very interesting character, definitely. And I feel like the character has a lot of history, and I do feel like Dr. Fate is probably one of the more appropriately handled legacy characters that we've seen in mainstream comics, especially on the DC side of things, which DC is normally very good about how they handle legacy characters, but this one specifically, I feel, is probably perfect perfect for it. And honestly, I wish more characters were capable of doing this if the fans would allow it. But that said, Dr. Fate, I do feel like is very underrepresented in uh, mainstream media. And who knows, we may see that change in regards to the CW series Stargirl that's coming out, as well as with The Rock's Black Adam movie coming out where Dr. Fate will be front and center. So maybe we'll see this character's stock rise up somehow. I wouldn't be surprised. And of course, I know people will draw some obvious comparisons Paris and saying, oh, he's a Doctor Strange ripoff. But please, let's remember Doctor Strange didn't come out until 1963. So if anything, Doctor Strange is a ripoff of Doctor Fate. But Doctor Strange just happens to be more well known, I guess. But that said, I did enjoy doing the research for this character, reading up on this character, learning more about uh, who they are, you know, the, the uh, more so the entity of Doctor Fate rather so much than, you know, the characters who basically took up the helm. It was a fun deal. But anyways, if you enjoyed this video, Hulk smash that like button and make sure to share this video all over the internet and with all your friends so they'll know how you leveled up your comic book big brain in regards to the legacy of Dr. Fate. Also on your way out, make sure to hit that subscribe button and let me know what you think about the character of Dr. Fate. Have you always known about him or are you today years old finding out about him? Keep it plus ultra and sound off in the comments.